Good evening. Hope I'm audible to all of you. Today, we are discussing about polycystic ovarian disease, Ayurvedic understanding and approach to Ayurvedic management of polycystic ovarian disease. As we all know, polycystic ovarian disease is a complex syndromic presentation which involves multiple endocrinal glands which affects not only the menstruation of a female, it diminishes the reproductive capacity of the female. At the same time, it also predisposes the female to various kinds of metabolic disorders as well as endocrinological disruption and uh, ultimately it can be so grave that it can take away her life in the form of endometrial cancer as well. So the incidence of this, if we consider it's increasing so drastically, particularly in these days of lockdown, I think the incidence has tripped the almost threefold it has increased. Various efforts have been done, though the disease was known in 1982 by Stain Leventhal, and it is named as Stain Leventhal syndrome, again, which was including only a few characters. So, though it includes uh, various uh, like uh, symptoms, which, uh, which starts from simple irregular menstruation to anovulation, to bio biochemical parameters for the inclusion, then ultimately giving rise to uh, the ultrasonographic uh, changes in the disease. So various diagnostic uh, discussions or various diagnostic milestones, if we say the National, National Institute of Health in 1990 has decided or has uh, concluded that if there is clinical or biochemical uh, evidences for hyper, hypo and hyperandrogenism and if there is oligo or anovulation present in the patient then it can be diagnosed as polycystic ovarian disease later on in rotterdam's and rotterdam diagnostic criteria they included that there should be hyperandrogenism clinically evident it if even if it is not there it can be included oligo and anovulation even if it is there, if it is not there, then also it can be included. But polycystic ovarian, uh, clinical features of polycystic ovarian disease, if it is present in the patient, in absence of the morphological feature, in, in, in presence of morphological changes in the ovaries, then also it can be diagnosed as polycystic ovarian disease. But further, the ashray, uh, or the ASRAM, ASRM, that is uh, American Society of uh, Reproductive Medicine, they said that even then, uh, if there is hyperandrogenism, oligo or anovulation, and polycystic ovarian disease in their presence or absence, you can include this. Then, Androgen Excess Polycystic Ovarian Society in 2006 concluded that. There should be hyperandrogenism, presence of hyperandrogenism, clinical or biochemical features of hyperandrogenism, along with or without hypo or oligo ovulation feature, hypomenorrhea, oligo, and anovulation feature, and as well as PCOS, the ultrasonographic features. If they are present, then we can diagnose this disease as a case of polycystic ovarian disease. In a nutshell, if we are discussing about what are, what are the pathologies we see in a patient of polycystic ovarian disease, we see that there is androgen excess, there can be anovulation and subfertility because there is impaired oocyte development due to the decreased level, levels of follicle stimulating hormone, but at the same time, almost threefold or more increase in the levels of luteinizing hormone production in the body. There will be invariable involvement of pancreas in the form of uh, insulin production and there will be tissue insulin resistance in this and as a response to this insulin resistance in the body, there will be cer cer certain metabolic complications. These insulin resistance may be 
because of the genetics, genetical predisposition in the patient. It may be because of the obesity, which is part and parcel of this particular disease, or it can also be because of the lifestyle modifications or sedentary lifestyle adopted by the patient. Then the polycystic nature, which is found in ultrasonological uh, findings, uh, because of this polycystic nature, or uh, to diagnose this polycystic nature of the ovaries, we should find the necklace pattern arrangement of follicles in the periphery of the ovarian cortex or in the uh, periphery of the ovary or in the ovarian cortex. At the same time, there should be unruptured 8 to 10 follicles which are growing to a certain extent and they get arrested from further growth at angel follicle development stage. Then even there can be even increased leptin is to adiponectin ratio which plays an important role in balancing the diet or uh, nutritional factor of the patient. So all these will be seen in a patient of polycystic ovarian disease. So the clinical features and other parameters, diagnostic criteria, we can discuss in detail and, uh, with the uh, next slide. So when all these features are present in the modern science or when we get a disease complex according to the modern uh, descriptions, which we may not find as a disease entity in Ayurveda, naturally the question arises how to treat a particular disease which has a origin in recent present, which was not present in the past and uh, the descriptions may not be available in the classical death text as an independent disease or as a disease entity in our classical text of Ayurveda. So how to approach or how to manage these conditions, definitely one needs to understand what is the key to understand new diseases uh, which are emerging with the new lifestyle modifications in our present uh, scenario. So the Acharyas, they gave us freedom of diagnosing the disease, even though it is not mentioned in the classics, they have not restricted ourselves, our, uh, the future generation from adding new diseases to Charaka Samhita or Sushil Samhita. Instead, they very clearly said that Vikaranam, Akushulo, Na Jimni Yatkadachana, Na Hisarva Vikaranam, Namato Asti Druvastitihi, Sayeva Kupito Doshaka, Samutrana Visheshataha, Stanantara Gatas Chai, Janayati Amayantahu. Last year, we will be able to do this. We will be able to do this. We will be able to do this. So, we can go according to the dosha lakshanas in the disease. But only the dosha lakshanas may not be sufficient in such conditions. We have to consider the panchakaro, the, uh, all the uh, panchakas of a disease should be considered in order to come to a conclusion of the disease. So the disease can also be manifested as per the disease can be uh, diagnosed or the approach for the disease, diagnosis of the disease may be from two aspects we can consider. So these two aspects may be by seeing the manifestations and analyzing its causes, that is from the Hetu, then by looking into the causes and their effects. So the causes and the effects, what are the effects of the disease? So by seeing the effects, then even we can think that Upashaya Anupashaya, anu, upashaya, anupashaya concept also we can adopt in this condition and we can say that if anu, the disease is responding to our understanding and our line of management, our understanding of the disease is perfect. So with this uh, side into polycystic ovarian disease, if we go with this uh, uh, approach to the newly emerged disease, polycystic ovarian disease, the presenting complaints of the patients in a case of polycystic ovarian disease, if they see, it may be weight gain, excessive weight gain, where even the BMI may cross 30, 
There can be acne or pigmentation, particularly again those as nigricans, the back nape of the neck of the patient will turn black and there will be a lot of acne coming out. Unwanted hair growth, particularly in the masculine pattern or hirsutism will be developing. Hair loss or bald part in the patient can also be seen in the patients of polycystic ovarian disease. Further, the main complaint usually the patient approaches with the, uh, to the gynecologist will be menstrual irregularities. The set of menstrual irregularities, the spectrum of menstrual irregularities may be absence of menstruation, it may be excessive bleeding sometimes, or it may be a combination of both. For some period, patient will not have menstruation at all. The, the menstrual uh, interval between two cycles may be ranging from 40 days to even an year also. So for years to year, she may not have her menstruation, but once it starts, it may not take the name of stopping at all. For months together, it, the flow may continue. So this kind of presentation can also be present in the patient. And some patients may uh, start the disease or may present in this disease with the scanty bleeding. Only a spot or two for one or two days will be present. Or sometimes it may be in the form of irregular bleeding, polymenorrhea, or sometimes uh, excessive polymenorrhagia also, or it may be sometimes three months, sometimes 15 days. This kind of irregular bleeding can also be found in the patients of polycystic ovarian disease. Some of the patients may not have much of the features, but when they go for the treatment of infertility, when they go to the consultant with a complaint of infertility, they may be diagnosed to have polycystic ovarian disease, more so in cases of lean polycystic ovarian disease. So this lean polycystic, very in the beginning of this era of polycystic ovarian disease, mostly it was understood only as obese polycystic ovarian disease, where the patients used to present with obesity and the clinical features of polycystic ovarian disease. I remember during my post-graduation studies, during 93 to 96, probably we used to diagnose the disease only with the hirsutism, uh, obesity, and oligomenorrhea or uh, menstrual irregularities as the triads of uh, polycystic ovarian disease. Later on, all these other criteria have been included. So now the latest addition for the uh, spectrum of polycystic ovarian disease is lean patients presenting with polycystic ovarian disease, particularly in the adolescent age group, school-going children or the college-going children, they will be having this lean polycystic ovarian disease. Most often, the diagnosis of lean PCOD is delayed because patients will only have menstrual irregularities, the very typical characteristic features of weight gain since it is missing, the uh, other, the acne and uh, all other features might not be taken up very seriously in lean PCOD patients. But presently, the incidence of PCOD is increasing very sharply and that is why everyone is sensitized and even whenever the patient is approaching with other complaints of menstrual irregularities also, we go to a scan, we get a scan done to diagnose them whether there is a feature of polycystic ovarian disease. So this is this, this is the clinical presentation of polycystic ovarian disease in one way. In other way, that sometimes patient may approach with all the investigation reports. So they may they might have consulted most often with Ayurvedic, we Ayurvedic physicians get the when, when we get the patients, we will have the set of reports with the patient and they have met at least a few uh, gynecologists already or endocrinologists and they come to us with all investigations, full work of investigations uh, which are supporting uh, the diagnosis which has already been suspected or clearly diagnosed. The scanning report may be present with a patient where ready diagnosis of PCOS is available. You need not go into the uh, either lakshanas of the pura rupa or rupa of the disease at all. The patient herself brings to you the diagnosis of polycystic ovarian disease where the investigations may be having altered FSH and LH ratio which is more than 1 is to 3 then increased androgen level, there will be decreased sex hormone binding globulin, hyperinsulinemia may be present in the patient, and abnormal GTT can also be a supporting feature for this. 
Serologically, more than six to ten graphene follicles will be there, and altogether, ovarian volume, if you see, it is more than 10 cc. And almost I have seen cases where they go up to 40 cc also, above which we consider it as ovarian cyst rather than polycystic ovaries. So almost 35, 38, 40 cc ovarian volume can also be found in the patients of polycystic ovarian disease due to the multiple graphene follicles which are increasing without uh, rupturing during the ovulation period. So as a whole, whole if we analyze the lakshanas in Ayurvedic terminologies, what we see in the patients of polycystic ovarian disease, so we get the symptoms of sthaulya, we get the features of prameha, we get ultrasonographically if we analyze the features, there will be granthi lakshana in the ovary. If we see the skin manifestations of the disease, there will be shudra roga manifestations, nilika, venga, etc., tilakalaka, charmakilaka, etc. Then if we see the hair fall and balding, then khalikya, shira kapalagata roga can also be diagnosed. And if you ask me what is there in uh, prasutantra and siroga particularly, in uh, which will be supporting or which will be explaining the features of polycystic ovarian disease, I would say Kashyapa explained Pushpadmi Jataharini as uh, the features of which are somewhat closer to the symptoms explained or the features explained in polycystic ovarian disease. And of course, we get Arthava Dushti and Yoni Vyapat or Arthava Vyapat and Yoni Vyapat Lakshanas also in a patient of polycystic or we can find the lakshanas of polycystic ovarian disease in yoni vyapar or in cases of arthava vyapar. So what kind of lakshanas we are observing in cases of PCOD and which matches with the lakshan of the diseases what we discussed now if we uh, match the tables of the signs and symptoms in Staurya we get Tandra, Alasya, Gurugatrata, Klama, Dorvalya, Uttarottara Datu Dorvalya, Sveda and Kleda Dikyada, Spix Tanodara Lambanam and Merudushti. Almost all the features of Saurya we can find in the patients of polycystic ovarian disease. Especially Sveda Kleda Dikya is present, Spix Tanodara Lambana is also present and the Medodushti Lakshanas also we can find in patients of polycystic ovarian disease. The cause for Staulia, very particularly, it is Santarpana Nidana and polycystic ovarian disease, again, it is a lifestyle disorder. Then coming to Avarna Janya Madhumeha Lakshanas, almost similar set of symptomatology where what we find in Staulia can also be seen in Avarna Janya Madhumeha except Prabhuta Avila Mutrata and of course uh, Sveda Kleda Dikyada, these which are done in bluish, this uh, colored in blue, probably are less found in patients of PCOD, whereas all above features are typically found in cases of polycystic ovarian disease. Again, the Avarna Janya Madhumeha, Samprakti cause is Santarpanatta. So Santarpana Janya Nidanas are giving rise to Madhumeha again. Then if we find the features of or the uh, pathology of Granthi, Mamsa, Asrat and Medu Dushti are seen and the uh, Paranas for Dushti are Nidana Sevana for Dushti of Mamsa, Asrat and Meda. Then Kshudra Roga, Tridoshaja, are the, these are the skin diseases, manifestations and, uh, on the skin, Tridoshaja and Rakta Dushti Nidanas can be found as a cause for Shudra Roga, which are seen as Nilika, Pidaka, etc. Then even the Lakshanas of Bahudosha Avastha can be found in the patients of polycystic ovarian disease. If you see Avipaka, Staulya, Gaurava, Pidaka, Alasya, Gaurbalya, Shrama, Tantra, Avasada, Simano Avasada again is though it is not a very much celebrated or a highlighted feature, many of the patients of polycystic ovarian disease they experience mood swings and even depression is the latest reported 
feature of polycystic ovarian disease. Of course, Clypea and Balavarna Hani or Nasha are associated with the manifestations of PCOD. So almost all the features of Pahudosha Avastha we can see in patients of polycystic ovarian disease. Probably we can say now that it is not Bhavadosha Avastha, it's not a single disease. It can manifest in different various ways. So same way, polycystic ovarian disease is only limited to ovaries, but when it exceeds this ovarian or the from the uh, gynecological purview, when it proceeds to a metabolic syndrome or syndromic presentation, when it takes a syndromic presentation, Bhavadosha Avastha of uh, Iberic classics can very well match with the descriptions of PCOD. Of course, Kutfarni Jataharani Khalikya is a uh, trichological disorder, uh, disorder of trichology, where Shiva Kapalagata, it is a Shiva Kapalagata Roga and hair loss is seen in this particular disease. Kushpagni Jataharani, if we analyze, it is a Sadhya Jataharani according to Kashyapa. The features of Kushpagni Jataharani are Pratha Pushpa Mdhya Nari, Pratha Pushpa, Pratha Pushpa may be, there can be menstruation, once a while there can be menstruation, but this menstruation need not be associated with ovulation. It is intentionless or it is not serving the purpose of uh, Pushpa Darshana. So Pushpa Darshana, is the very purpose of Pushpa Darshana is uh, fertility or reproduction. When it is not seen with the Pushpa Darshana or Pushpa is not followed by Phala, Pradur Bhava, then probably it is considered as Pratha Pushpa, then Stula, Lomasha, Ganda. So Stula is obese, we can interpret as obesity. Then Lomasha Ganda, the hirsutism, very description of uh, hirsutism, we can see in the presentation of Lomasha Ganda of Pushpagni Jataharini. The triad, as I was discussing, the very beginning, in the very beginning of PCOD era, we were considering this Vrata Pushpa, Staulya, and Lomasha Ganda, hirsutism, obesity, and irregular menstruation as the classical triad of PCOD presentation. So, same features are explained in Pushpagni Jataharini of Kashyapa Samhita. Then, of course, Atiloma is one of Ashtan Hindi, the Purusha Lakshana also. The cause for this is even Jataharini is not very specific. Then coming to Arthava Vyapat and Yoni Vyapats. In case of Arajaska, Anarthava, Rajasketi, Anarthava. But Arajaska is Yoni Vyapat is associated with the Tarsya Vaivarnya Janani Prashan. Tarsya Lakshana is missing in case of polycystic ovarian disease. Vivernia, if we consider as the uh, acanthosis nigricans or pigmentation, uh, we can include. But since Karsha Lakshana is not a characteristic feature, even in lean PCOD, lean PCOD, though the patient is not obese, always she has a tendency to develop obesity in the gradual future. That predisposition is there. And even the central obesity, the fat deposition in abdominal area is also observed, though patient cannot be frankly said as obese, fat deposition in the abdominal layer is found in case of lean PCOD. So somehow, Arajaska Yoniviapa, though it matches to some extent, it cannot be considered as polycystic ovarian disease. Again, Lohita Kshara, where Kshara of Arthava is seen, that is irregular menstruation or continuous oozing of menstrual blood, or even in Raktayoni, excessive bleeding can be seen, but these are having only the features of menstrual irregularities. No other characteristic feature of PCOD could be observed in case of Lohita Kshara Yoni Vyapar. Hence, that also is not a suitable understanding of PCOD. Then coming to Vandhya, Vandhya has a Bijanushti uh, origin. So here also in PCOD, we have origin of Bijanushti. But the clinical feature of Vandhya is uh, somewhat like premature ovarian failure, where after a certain period, Vandhya, Nashta, Arthava, Kateta, for a certain period of time, patient will menstruate. And after that, all of a sudden, there will be cessation of menstruation. Patient will never menstruate after that. Or 
there may be a gradual uh, increase in the duration in the interval of menstrual cycle at the same time decrease in the flow period and finally there will be cessation it's something like menopause which is preformed in between 30 to 40 years of age around 30 average age being 35 years that that univia we correlate to one year condition so that is also not seen in polycystic ovarian disease coming to arthava vyapar anarthava so anarthava is a presenting feature of polycystic ovarian disease so this avarna lakshana in cases of PCOD presenting with amenorrhea as a clinical feature, we find the lakshanas of vatakafai ravrata margatva arthavam nashyati striyaha. So anarthava lakshana is one of the manifestation of polycystic ovarian disease. So wherever anarthava is the presenting feature, Probably, we can consider the line of management of anarthava in case of PCOD. At the same time, some of the patients present with astragdara lakshana, atipravrati lakshana, followed, followed by this anarthava period, there will be atipravrati. So, you most often, it is this kind of presentation. And in lean PCOS patients, there can be at regular intervals also, there can be astragdara presentation. So, astragdara can also be a presenting feature of polycystic ovarian disease with or without other pathological features. Then coming to Arthava Dushti Lakshana. What is Arthava Dushti Lakshana? Alpha, Savedana and Krishnata Yukta. Usually, this kind of Vedana Yukta Arthava Pravrati is not seen in case of PCOD since the menstruations are not ovular bleedings, they are anovulatory bleeding. The Savedana is not found in these patients, and even Krishnata is rarely seen in patients of polycystic ovarian disease. Then Adhika Visraganda Yukta or Daha Lakshana Yukta. Uh, to some extent, Adhika Lakshanas we can find, but the, the typical features of Vesra Gandhita is not very often found. But in some of the lean PCOD patients, if we are uh, diagnosing lean PCOD cases exclusively uh, with the point of view of Arthava Dushti, some of Arthava Dushti Lakshanas probably we can find particularly uh, Arthava Dushti Lakshana as the patients with the Pitta Prakriti, patients of Pitta Prakriti coming with the uh, polycystic ovarian disease, uh, lean PCOD most often, lean PCOD patients will present with Pitta Arthava Dushti Lakshana as also. Then of course, Kapha and Vata Kapha Lakshanas of Arthava Dushti are quite often found in the patients of polycystic ovarian disease. Whenever they are having excessive bleeding, so this excessive bleeding will be mostly associated with Granthi Bhuta Arthava Dushti Lakshanas. Pichi Laguna Yukta Granthi Bhuta Arthava Dushti Lakshanas can be very frequently found in patients of polycystic ovarian disease. They may be obese or they may be lean. In both ways, we can find Arthava Dushti Lakshanas in many of the patients. Then, of course, Arthava Vraddhi and Arthava Kshaya Lakshanas, though found in this condition, but these Arthava Vraddhi and Kshaya are de depicting or are not associated with any other features of polycystic ovarian disease. So they are not the syndromic presentations of a disease. They are simply some simple pathologies, maybe sometimes uh, influence of Ahara Vihara or influence of Vata Pradhi or Pitta Pradhi in a transient manner in the patient's lifestyle. So they will be representing, they will be showing, uh, presenting as Arthava Pradhi and Shaya Lakshana. And the simple line of management will be uh, enough for tackling this Arthabakshaya Vrati Lakshanas. So I do not consider them to be a very grave pathological entity such as polycystic ovarian disease. Now coming to after assessing for the Lakshanas from Ayurvedic as well as modern point of view, if we analyze what are the causes of this polycystic ovarian disease, maybe uh, I will be labeled as very uh, orthodox 
but I would clearly say that the pathological pathological entity of this policy or disease uh, of polycystic ovarian disease is emerged because of the new or modern lifestyle. I would say it as a lifestyle disorder. And to be more specific, we can say it is a mismatch of nature versus nurture. The nurture has to go, nurturing of a child should go according to the nature or as per the rules of the nature. So when we bypass this nature and we go into nurturing excessively, then such diseases will manifest. So the examples are like the evidences are lifestyle. So just like any animal, human is also uh, habituated. He has to be, he has to earn his bread by working. So today's lifestyle is nowhere linked to this uh, earning of bread through physical work. It is either by a mental work, purely a mental work, or it is uh, simply a sedentary lifestyle. In other words, if, we, if I say it's a sedentary lifestyle. At this juncture, if I take you back to uh, 1980s or 70s or uh, 1990, even up to 2000, there was a tradition at uh, home that a girl is assigned with girl child is assigned with certain duties and a boy is assigned with certain duties at home. Uh, most often the duties assigned to a girl is uh, related with the cooking and household chores of the uh, uh, house, like pulling the water, it may be mopping the floor, grooming the floor, then grinding with the physical that machine, not with a uh, electrical machine, but it is physical grinding, then it may be uh, all washing cloths or washing the utensils, etc. So all these required, it was not like standing and doing, repeatedly uh, sitting and getting up, these exercises were associated with the lifestyle. And even carrying the water uh, from a distant well and all these almost had extensive physical work involving physical strain in the girls. Then almost the schools were also uh, on some two to three kilometers away from the house and there was a good ground in the schools and every child used to have a good exercise end of the day when they were coming from home either by the walk they take for coming home or by having a, a game period, compulsory game period, end of the day in the schools. But if we look into today's or current scenario, lifestyle of today's child, all these aspects are missing. There is no ground at all in the school. There is uh, probably nothing exercise pattern except a monotonous, some exercises of that too, once in a week or twice a week at school. The bus comes to the doorstep and if the child steps out, that will be into the bus, school bus. And if she steps down from her bus, it will be into the house, right? So this kind of lifestyle we are adopting. Uh, further to add on, most of the girl, uh, even the children, they are habituated, especially girls, they're habituated for Ved Dharana. I don't know what exactly the reason is. Maybe all children are very much cared for and uh, having one or two children at home, uh, the protection is more. They're not exposed to dirt or this kind of uh, things. Maybe school washrooms, they find very unhygienic. And whenever I come across school children and when I in investigate or interrogate with them, most often, especially girls of adolescent age, they say that they never use make use of school toilets. Uh, they say it is dirty, it's a uh, uh, very bad order uh, is there in the school washrooms. So morning they pass urine at home. To avoid urge for urination, they won't drink water at all sometimes in the school. So this kind of habits are there, that is Vegadharana is asso associated in most of the uh, lifestyles of young girls now. Then altered food habits. Yes, of course, everyone knows that I need not explain you. 
stressors in the life. Every even a LKG child says that it is stressed out. Genetic tendencies. So a polycystic ovarian disease is also having genetic tendency. Uh, two siblings in a house. If uh, if they are having uh, like mother having polycystic ovarian disease, they have the inheritance of this polycystic ovarian disease. But here again, we have to consider the epigenetic theory. In epigenetic theory, it says that if the congenial environment and lifestyle is there, then only though there is genetic predisposition for a disease is there, that will manifest. If the lifestyle and food habits are not congenial for the manifestation of that particular disease, even if there is tendency, genetic tendency, the disease may not manifest. Then exposure to extrinsic hormones. In the lifestyle, in the food habits, we have a lot of chemicals. We have a lot of, uh, I can say, uh, hormone disruptors, the extrinsic hormone disruptors. There is a hormone uh, disruption theory, like endocrine disruption. So the endocrine system of uh, women, it's disrupted by extrinsic agents for example, to say DDT, if you take the example of DDT, uh, almost like uh, Rangoli powder, uh, DDT powder is used at homes to uh, prevent all uh, creatures, right? It uh, starts from simple uh, ant to cockroaches. So for everything, the DDT was being used at uh, uh, houses earlier. And this particular DDT has a very much similarity to the structure of estrogen. The benzene 4 benzene ring of DDT and benzene ring of uh, estrogen hormone, they are very similar. So when the DDT is consumed through an indirect means, maybe water contaminated, the fruits or vegetables contaminated with any ways, if DDT enters into the body of a female, don't be surprised if I say it enters into the body because even in mother's breast milk, and in the body of dead vultures also, the DDT, traces of DDT were found uh, sometimes back, right? Such is the use of this DDT, particularly in India. So, extrinsic, these uh, hormone disruptors are there when we use them excessively. Or this may be even in the form of some poultry animals. For the poultry animals, they use some hormones for faster growth. Or in cases of milk, but, uh, dairy animals, they give estrogen injections for the production of excessive milk. So when the girls are consuming such kind of food, which is fortified or indirectly influenced by extrinsic hormones, naturally the intrinsic hormonal, intrinsic hormonal secretion will get impaired and this can result in uh, such kind of hormonal disorders or endocrine disorders. So altogether, the nurturing of the girl child is taking an abnormal turn, deviating it from nature, which is becoming a cause for diseases like polycystic ovarian disease. I won't say it's the only manifestation or polycystic ovarian disease is the only disease which is produced because of this. Rather, there, are, there will be, if the same thing continues, I believe there will be a uh, sequel of diseases which can slowly enter into the lives because of this particular lifestyle. Now, if we see the nidanas, what are the common uh, features in the causes of polycystic ovarian disease and uh, the diseases what we have discussed as nearby diseases to this polycystic ovarian disease. So causes of Santarpana, if we see Santarpayatiya, Snigdair Madurai, Guru Pichilaihi, Navan Naihi, Madhyescha, Mamsescha, Anupavari Jaihi, Gorusaihi, Gaudikescha, Annaihi, Paishtikescha, Ati Matrashaha, as I discussed earlier, during this uh, episodes of or the periods of polycystic, I mean uh, lockdown, I, I can say that almost threefold increased incidences of adolescent girls coming with the polycystic or rather polycystic ovarian disease, I can say amenorrhea uh, patients we could find. So it is because of this. Deva, Swapna, Shaya, 
ಆಸನ ಸುಖೇರತಃ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ನಿಗ್ಧೈ ಮಧುರೈ ಪ್ರಭಾವಲಿ ಎವ್ರಿ ಹೌಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ಡ್ ಸಡನ್ ಬೂಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಿಪರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾಕ್ಡೌನ್ ಸೊ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಟ್ರೈಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರೆಸಿಪೀಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಇನ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲರ್ನ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫರ್ಬಾಟನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೊ ಎವ್ರಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯೂ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಆಫ್ ರೆಸಿಪೀಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ರೆಸಿಪೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಅ ರೇರ್ ಲೀಜರ್ ದೆನ್ Uh, during the march season march april which was a peak study period so everyone enjoyed good diva sapna shaya hasuka asana sukha etc and of course today's children they are chaste adveshi they never go for grounds to play instead mobile addictions are more computer addictions are more lot of pistanna the bakery items they are happy in consuming these and ati matra shah even gora sahi gaudika ischa cheese pizza and uh, of course butter all these gora sahi gaid gaudika ischa all sweet dishes all these we can see mamsa ischa anupavadi jehi and uh, you know in every uh, surroundings you might have observed that there is an increased boom of consuming non vegetarian food during this particular period so all these santarpana nidanas we can find as common features in polycystic ovarian disease also patients who are involving in such kind of very close similarity between the nidanas of santarpana and positive factors of polycystic particularly the obese polycystic ovarian disease we can find coming to the causes of avarna janya prameha again it is a repetition of same purusnigdam lalavanati matram samashnat navamannam chapanam chanidra asya sukhani cha so tyakta vyayama chintanam samshodanam akurvatam so earlier there was a tendency or there was a tradition at homes that almost on alternate sundays they used to give eranda taila for the children one of my patient used to acknowledge this every 15 days my grandfather used to give me 15 ml of eranda taila on one holiday sundays especially so that we will clean, get cleansed our abdomen will get cleansed that was his version so we were never getting any disease as such and uh, that was uh, his opinion like so such kind of samshodanam akurvata there is no rest for the digestive system every day consumption consumption and on holidays there will be more consumption more variety consumption with more varieties and more kinds of uh, santarpana aharas this can be again supporting to the concept then causes of rakta dushti jalaja anupa bailana prasahanam cha prasaha nam cha sevanam that is anupa mamsarasa dadi excessive intake amla masto sukta all this then viruddhanna so concept of viruddhanna uh, it is not only in ayurveda concept of viruddhanna was the traditional uh, intelligence in the uh, mothers and in grandmothers so never they used to boil the curd never they used to mix dugda and matsya they were never they used to mix amla and uh, kshira so all these traditional secrets of preparation of food was existing in the tradition of uh, indian culture so now this is lost and most often they make fun of us if they say there is a concept of viruddhanna and they say nothing will happen so viruddhanna consumption consumption of viruddhanna has become a routine now or a style and cling na puti nam bakshane na cha i don't think people will eat without keeping anything even if if it is not a prepared food the vegetables fruits we have a habit of uh, pushing everything into refrigerator so it's nothing but clean na puti nam bakshane na cha and even to the extent that working women they prepare the atta they prepare the dum for the whole week on sundays Uh, even the masala i heard on sundays they keep it inside the refrigerator and uh, part by part they take and make use of it every day week the for the rest of the uh, week days so this uh, trend is increasing bhuktva diva prasapatam prasapata if the students particularly the younger generation if they don't have the class they sleep they enjoy sleeping until 
10, 11, 12 o'clock, you just tap any parent, they will start explaining uh, how their children are not listening to them and how they were made to uh, work during their early days or uh, childhood days. So this kind of change in lifestyle. Pravas Nikda Guru Nicha Atyadhanam, even after satiety, eating more even after satiety. So Kalecha Anavasechana, Adhyashanaihi, all these Ajirna, Adhyashana, all these we can see. And even Upavasa is also a cause here. Uh, either the student will, I mean children will eat more or some of the days they never eat, they won't eat at all. They fast continuously. Or they take only little pramitashanam, little food in the tiffin box and they drink a lot of water. This kind of uh, bojana vidhi, uh, not following the bojana vidhi can also give rise to various disorders. Then the genetic causes, it's very clearly said in Ayurveda that So genetic predisposition for the diseases is very well accepted. If matraja avayavas are to be uh, inflicted or affected, definitely with the garbakala during the intrauterine or even polycystic ovarian disease, finds a reference that the postnatal, during the postnatal period also, there can be an influence of this. Uh, so, a genetic origin of the disease can also be very well explained. Then, Lakshanas of Amadosha, Srotho Rodha Bala Brahmsha Garo Anila Modata, Alasya, Apakti, Nistiva, Malasanga, all these features can also be seen in cases of PCOD. Then coming to if we find or screen pradoshija vyadis in rasa pradoshija vyadi, lakshanas of rasa pradoshija vyadi, we get the features like aruchi, gaurava, tandra, agninasha, angamarda, srotorodha, up to klaibhya. Same way in rasa pradoshija vyadis, we get the reference of pushta, vidaka, asragdara, nilika, vyanga. In mamsa pradoshija, Granthi Lakshana can be found. Medha Pradoshja, Prameha Purva Rupa Lakshanas will be obtained. Asti Pradoshja, Vivarnatva, Kesha, Loma, Shmashra Dosha we can find. And in Shukra Pradoshja Vyadis, Klaipya, Garbhasrava or Pata are observed in Shukra Pradoshja Vyadis. Here I would like to draw your attention that during uh, the patients, with the patients of polycystic ovarian disease, first thing is infertility. Even if infertility is overcome by any of the means during the course of pregnancy also may be due to the poor quality of the ovum or even if uh, an artificial uh, in vitro fertilization is done. In spite of in vitro fertilization techniques, there is an environment in the uh, ovary, ovarian environment due to the change in the paracrine uh, gland secretions inside the ovary, the ovarian environment changes which hampers the quality of the ovum. So because of which the cleavage will be in a poor manner, the implantation is poor and definitely there will not be a proper growth. Even if the sta this stage is overcome, then there can be the possibilities of frequent miscarriages in patients of ERT with polycystic ovarian disease. Not only this, the, the conceived patients of polycystic ovarian patients of polycystic ovarian disease with great difficulty, even if they conceive, it is observed that they are having increased tendency to have preeclamptic toxemia. They are more prone to develop gestational diabetes mellitus. They are more prone to have return labor and stillbirth. So, Shukra Pradosha is definitely seen that is the disease is affecting not only one Datu, the Uttarotara to substantiate with this Bahudosha Avastha in the manifestation of the disease, I can further substantiate with it is not only involving Prasa or Rakta 1 or the two Datus from top to bottom, all the Doshas are involved in the manifestation of this polycystic ovarian disease. That is why it is not remaining as a disease, rather it is manifesting as a syndrome. It is involving multi-systems and it is capable of producing 
all the features from simple menstrual irregularities to cardiovascular accidents and cancer, endometrial carcinoma. Then if we analyze further Avarana Lakshanas, Pittavrata Apana Lakshana, in case of Pittavrata Apana Lakshana, we get Rajasascha Ativartanam. So, Avarana Samprapti is also to be understood or considered in this case. And if we further from the Nidana, manifestation of the diseases, if we say Santarpanotta Vyadi, if we consider Pedaka, Ushta, Amapradosha, Klaibhya, Atistaulya, Alasya, Guru Gatrata, Indriya Srotasam, Lepo, Hypercholesterolemia, Shofa, Shofa in the ovaries or Granthi Pradurvava in the ovaries. So, all the features of polycystic ovarian disease can be traced in the Santa Pranata Vyadesh. Hence, to conclude, to summarize the Samprapti Gatakas of the disease by analyzing all these Nidanas, then the Lakshanas of this disease is, uh, if we say that, dosha, it is not only one dosha here, kapha predominantly because in case of polycystic ovarian disease with obesity, if we see, most often we find this disease in kapha pradhana prakriti or vata kapha prakriti. It, most often lean PCOD, we have carried out a study, almost in 50 patients, around 35 patients, we could get a uh, Kapha Vata Prakriti or Vata Kapha Prakriti and another 20 to 30, uh, 20 percent, uh, yeah, 30% yeah, of the patients had in lean PCOD, 30% of the patients had Kapha Vata Prakriti, Kapha Vata Dushti Lakshanas, whereas 20%, 15 to 20% of the patients had Pitta Kapha Kafaja Artava Dushti Lakshanas and the prakriti of these patients were Pitta Kafaja or Kapha Pitta Prakriti. Predominantly, we could find in case of lean PCOD. Whereas in obese PCOD, the prakriti was mostly Kapha dominated one. So in Santarpanotta Vyadis also, Kapha or Kapha Prakriti patients are more prone for Santarpana. So Kapha Vata predominantly to start with involvement of Titta, wherever there is Asraga Lakshanas are manifested, we have to consider. Then if we see Dushya, we have already observed in what way Dushyas are involved in production of different uh, Lakshanas. So thus, right from Rasadhatu, even up to Shukradhatu, we can find the features or we can attribute it to Upadhatu Artava also. And but Upadhatu Artava is in the form of menstrual irregularities, but Shukra, when it is involved, then only uh, it is it will be capable or we can explain the Lakshanas or the observations we make during the pregnancy or pregnancy disturbances and infertility can be explained. So Ratsa, Rakta, Mansa, Medha, etc. Till the Shukra, we have to consider here as Dushya. Agni, Jatarhagni and Datuagni Manya, that is why Uttarotara Datu hampering is seen. Then Ama, Jatarhagni Janya and Datuagni Janya, Agni Manya should be considered. Udbhavasthana, Ama Pakvashya, Sancharasthana, Rasayani, Sartavasrutus and Sarvasharira. Apanasthana, Adishthana, Karbashya and Sarvasharira is the Vektasthana. Prasarakta Mamsa Medha till every srutas, here it, we have to consider. Dushti, it varies from person to person. In some patients, only Sangha Anartha Valakshana may be observed. In some patients, there may be Ati Pravrati also. And some, most of the patients will present with Granthi also as a manifestation. Roga Marga is Abhyantara here. So the conclusion we can draw is, it is a Tridosha Chavyadi with the Vyadi Sankara. Many disease lakshanas we can see is because of the involvement of all the doshas and all the doshas. It can also be considered as bahudosha avastha with the sama lakshanas more predominant in case of obese patients and sometimes even nirama lakshanas can be seen in case of lean polycystic ovarian disease. But it is not a, a very mandatory rule that lean PCOD patients will not be having some lakshanas. Then mainly the Nidanas to start with, they are Santarpana Janya Nidanas. It may be lean, it may be obese. In both the patients, Santarpana Nidanas are most commonly seen. 
Vrata Kapha, Pitta, Vritvata causes Tushana of the Dhatus initially proceeding to Avarna in the Sota Marga, producing Avrata Dosha or Avarada Lakshanas. Sangha, Ati Pravrati, Siddha, Granthi types of Sota Dushti may be seen in this condition. Now, if we are analyzing Chatkriya Kala in, uh, of polycystic ovarian disease, Sanchaya Vasta, Agni Mandya, Prakopa Vasta, Alasya, Guru Gatrata, we can see and Guru Gaurava, Rasaravasta, Guru Gatrata. When it takes Sana Samshraya, then Staulya and uh, oh, menstrual irregularities, we can see even to some extent polycystic ovarian disease or oh, polycystic nature of the ovaries may be seen. Or in other ways, we can say that the Tushti Lakshanas or the Lakshanas of the disease will be uh, in the uh, genital tract. Right? It has not exceeded the genital. Presenting features are in the genital tract, except that of Staulya. In Vyakta Vasta, Anarthava, Pradara, and Klaipya. And once this Vyakta Vasta exceeds and Veda Vasta approaches, then patient may even develop diabetes mellitus, atherosclerosis, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, or even endometrial carcinoma. Some of the salient features of Lean PCOD because nowadays lean PCOD is taking a leap over the obese PCOD. So 5% of the lean women may be suffering from PCOS, they say. 20 to 40% of the women are having uh, with the PCOS are lean. Diagnosis in lean PCOS is becoming delayed, is mostly delayed because of its uh, unusual or not the classical presentation. It's not presenting with the classical features of the triad as I expect, I mean, explained earlier. So most often, waist to height ratio, if it is more than 0.5, there is increased risk for polycystic ovarian disease. 75% of lean PCOS patients are insulin resistant. Postprandial insulin is abnormal rather than fasting in cases of polycystic ovarian disease, particularly in lean PCOD. In lean PCOD patients, often we see the reactive hypoglycemia. So after consumption of the food, in 1.5 to 5 hours with a mean duration, in between the mean duration of 1.5 to 5 hours, there will be reactive hypoglycemia. So, so during this phase, they may have hypoglycemic attacks to overcome which they tend to eat more. They may sound the nervous, they may be having more thirst, they may be sweating more, and this kind of hypoglycemic features may be seen in patients of lean PCOD more often rather than slow I mean, obese PCOD. And because of this hunger and eating cycles, there will be more fat deposition, and this fat deposition again predisposes them for insulin resistance. Thus, the vicious cycle is rotating. Coming to the chikitsa, again, whenever the disease is not named, chikitsa is not explained, then also we need not worry how to treat. There should not be a question on how to treat this. Vikara Prakati Radhishtana Antarani Che Samuttana Visheshanscha Buddhva Karma Samarabed Ketua Tritayam Jnatva Karmani Arabhati Visha Jnana Purva Mietha Nyayamsa Karma Sunamukhyati So Chikitsa, if we consider by analyzing the doshas, doshas and by analyzing the positive factors, lakshanas, etc. We have come to a conclusion that these are the uh, Samprapti Gatakas and Samprapti of this disease. So, Santarpanatta Vyadi Chikitsa we can adopt. Chikitsa of Amadosha and Bahudosha Vasta we have to consider. Prameha Chikitsa, Prameha Lakshana Zade, Prameha Chikitsa we can adopt. Shudra Roga Chikitsa also we can consider. Chikitsa of Rakta Dushti is, of course, we have to see. Granthi Chikitsa, since the manifestation is in the form of Granthi. Avarana Chikitsa, we analyze the Avarana Lakshanas, Yoni Vyapat and Arthava Vyapat Chikitsa is also should be there. Now you may be questioning me how to adopt all these Chikitsas and for a given one particular disease, how we can think of these many line of Chikitsas, these many Chikitsa Sutras, how we can consider in one disease. So if you analyze the Chikitsa Sutra of these diseases listed, 
ऑलमोस्ट ऑल योनि व्यापत आर्थ व्यापत ग्रंथि संकर्पण चिकित्सा प्रमेय एवरीवे रक्त दुष्टि इट स्टार्ट विद संशोधन सो संशोधन इज द बहुदोषा अवस्था इनक्लूडिंग सो शोधन चिकित्सा इज द मेन लाइन ऑफ चिकित्सा इवन इन पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवेरियन डिसीज इट मे बी लीन इट मे बी ओबेस मोस्ट ऑफन संशोधन चिकित्सा इफ यू स्टार्ट द लाइन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट विद शोधना डिजायरेबली क्लासिकल आरोहण स्नेह पान युक्त संशोधन बट इफ you cannot do it at any cost then you can even think of think of as i discussed earlier every sundays castoral shodhana or some virechana dravyas every sundays or even sadhyavamana uh, that can also be considered but all these sadhyavamana sadhya virechana are getting rid of only the koshtagata doshas it's not taking the doshas from vilina doshas in the dhatus but preferably that is why आरोहण स्नेह पान युक्त क्रम शोधन चिकित्सा इज इंडिकेटेड फॉर ऑल द डिजीजेस दैट हेज टू बी द स्टार्टिंग चिकित्सा इवन माय प्रोजेक्ट विच आई हैड कंप्लीटेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ राजीव गांधी यूनिवर्सिटी वेर इन हंड्रेड हंड्रेड प्लस हंड्रेड एंड फाइव पेशेंट्स आई इंक्लूडेड इन द स्टडी वेर आई स्टार्टेड विद वन शोधना वेदर इट मे बी it was either vamana or virechana depending on the prakriti and the dosha pradhanata in the patient there also i could find that if i had conducted repeated shodhanas in bahudosha avastha they say repeated shodhana if i had uh, given them repeated shodhanas probably i would have overcome the disease at a short span of time so one shodhana is also not sufficient if possible two or three samshodhana can give you very prompt results and fast relief from the disease so shodhana is uh, uh, i say if facilities are available it is mandatory and it gives you quick results considering the vishesha of vata kapha and other plan of treatment should be decided in the presentations of anarthava anarthava vata kapha iravrata margatva so avarana and kapha atra samshodana ha vamana natu virechana it is dalana very clearly said that here virechana should not be given in anarthava rather vamana should be the first line of management because in virechana the agneya dhat dravyas or agneya bhavas will be eliminated from the body but in anarthava we need to eliminate saumya bhavas kapha elimination should be there so in anarthava samprapti we prefer samshodana in the form of vamana whereas if the patient is coming with the asradhara samprapti pratimarga haranam to rakta pitta rakta pitte vidhiyate asradhara vamana can also be given if pitta lakshanas are more in asradhara involvement of pitta is more if the patient is having more of pitta prakriti then with the lakshanas associated then virechana will be given otherwise vamana can also be the ideal treatment in case of asradhara throughout the course of treatment if you do not advise the patient for langhana and apatarpana it is of no use i, I very clearly observed that the patients who strictly uh, limit uh, their consumption of food or they restrict their uh, food habits to the diet suggested they give a Uh, they show a better response so langana apatarpana needs to be continued throughout the course of treatment then considering vyadhi sankara whatever the manifestation of the patient we need to adopt the line of treatment in the similar manner for example if granthi samprapti is more if the patient's uh, uh, ovarian volume is more then kanchana ragukulu granthi hara chikitsa prameha is there then chandra prabha may be opted for if artha vyapat is there artha vyapat chikitsa asravidara is there pitahara pushanga line of management should be given so like this what is the presentation depending on that we have to go and the twakagata samprapti in my study i observed that all this tilaka laka vyanga nilika all skin manifestations they very clearly they promptly disappear with the treatment of main disease i did not give any local therapies i did not give any therapies to the patient which was oriented or directed to treat the rakta dhatu or etc it was purely a single combination a single in the sense one set of combination which i will be explaining in the next slides 
So I did not give anything oriented for this uh, Tvak manifestations. In spite of that, there was regression in the hirsutism. There was regression in echinosis nigricans. There was regression in the incidences of uh, echinin. Uh, patients got prompt relief with the main line of management for polycystic ovarian disease. Anulomena of Vayu always should be considered. Right. So, discussing on some of the common full prescriptions, Varunadi Kashaya, particularly in Medha Vriddhi, and even in case of Granthi, this is what Kapha Medha Hara, the combination is. So, Kapha Medha Dushti, wherever it is, we can go for that. Then, Kana Shatakwa the Kashaya. The Shatakwa is a very good drug in the management of polycystic ovarian disease. In all polycystic nature of the disease, to have some action on ovaries. You can describe this Kanachata Hari Kashaya. Gandharva Astadi Kashaya, Garbhasha and Samshodhana. So, any patient with infertility for 10 days, first 10 days, you give Gandharva Astadi Kashaya, there will be Garbhasha Shodhana. So, very good. Patan Lomaka also. So, we can go for Gandharva Astadi. Even in obesity, it's a uh, Yerenda is a good drug of choice in era, uh, obesity. There also we can go for. Even Trifala Kashaya, obese patients, Trifala and Asana combination, if uh, prepared in a arloha patra, they say hasti also becomes weak. So, trifla kashaya, so good combination, good prescription in case of obese patients. Lashana erendadi kashaya, it's uh, agnaya guna vardhaka and anulomana erendadi kashaya. So, vatanulomana also in case of anarthava samprapti, lashana erendadi kashaya can be the option. Loha sava, loha is arthava janaka, loha. With the abhaya combination is a very good uh, combination in case of obese polycystic ovarian disease. Vata kafahara, saptasara, and in patients where they are having difficulty, I mean dysmenorrhea, rarely if there is patient coming with the dysmenorrhea, then also it's yoni shulahara as well. So saptasara kashaya can be the drug of choice. In case of pitta prakriti, in case of pitta artava dushti lakshanas, this Manjistari Kashaya, even in case of Asraddhara also, Manjistari Rakta Prasadana, so Manjistari Kashaya can be a good combination. Then in case of infertility, the uh, Shamula Kumari, where ovary is not responding, just like ovarian stimulation, the Shamula Kumari combination may be used as an ovarian stimulator. Then Vidanga is drug of choice in obesity, it's also a Rasayana. Then Jira Kadya Rishta, Garbashaya Shodaka again. So, postnatal cases, if they are reverting back to polycystic ovarian disease or the patients who conceived and delivered, then to prevent them from entering again into polycystic ovarian disease, Jiraka can be a good combination, which is a drug of choice in Sudhikavasta as well. And Chitraka proved to be a good stimulator of ovary, ovary. So, in case of anovulation, chronic anovulation, infertility, chitra kasava, chitra kadivati, you can give in it, it increases the uh, rupturing, it's bhedana guna, helps in bhedana of this uh, follicles, atretic follicles, which are not uh, finding any rupture. Then Lodhra Sava is proved drug. Researchers have proven that Lodhra regularizes the menstrual cycle. It's a menstrual regulator. So Lodhra Sava may be used in irregular cycles with the excessive bleeding rather. Right? Then Abhyarishta, it is a Kafahara. So wherever there is Granthi Bhuta Arthava Dushti, wherever there is a slimy Pichila Srava is there. So in these patients, Abhaya Rishta can be a combination. Abhaya Jiraka you can club. Abhaya Vidanga you can club. Or in Pitta Pradhana Prakratitta Kapha, if found associated, then Draksha Abhaya can also be a good combination. In lean PCOD here, Draksha Kumari Pitta Prakrata Pitta to restore the Prakrata Pitta. So in Pitta Dushti Lakshanas with lean PCOD, as I said earlier, Pitta involvement in lean PCOD we observed in many patients. So Draksha Kumari is a good combination. It regularizes the cycle even where the patients are getting menstruation once in 45 days, 60 days. Draksha Kumari combination is a good uh, regularizer of menstruation. Coming to the churnas, the Shatapushpa, Shatavari Churnas, Shatapushpa Churna, 
uh, often on empty stomach, just like Kalpa, Shatapushpa, Kalpa, empty stomach, 10 grams of Shatapushpa Churna along with the Falagrata, along with milk, or if the patient is not fussy, you can even prescribe it with the Tila Taila. Tila Taila is Arthava Janaka and Garva Shodana. So it's a very good combination to induce ovulation in patients of polycystic ovarian disease. Then even in case of asraddara with infertility, patients presenting with asraddara infertility and ovulation is established after you can uh, treating for, with the Shada Pushpa Churna for some time, you can go for Shada Varikalpa. Tila Muladi, Tila is Atava Janaka, and Trifla Churna and Harita Churna, Anulomana Vata Anulomana, and they are helpful in reducing the obesity also. They are helpful in doing, uh, I can say, Sruta uh, Shodhana. So that uh, ovarian rupture, uh, the Graphene rupture of graphene follicle will be uh, good with the trifla haritaki, drugs like trifla and or haritaki. Then, if we discuss about vati, guti, and rasaushadis, what can be used in polycystic ovarian disease, ubeirakshadi vati. There were ample studies carried out on ubeirakshadi vati, which has uh, lata karanja in it. It's a good combination, but somehow it is not very uh, used very vastly. But it is a useful drug. Kuberakshadivati is useful in uh, regularizing the cycle. Chitrakadivati, as I discussed earlier, it's a bhedana uh, guna of chitraka helps in rupturing of the follicles. And first half of the cycle for inducing ovulation, you can give Chitrakadivati. Same Kanyalohadivati is uh, Kanyaloha is helpful in increasing the uh, endometrial thickness. Some patients constantly. Uh, there will be thin endometrium within this thing uh, because of the, some thin patients with thin endometrium, Kanya Loha Devati can, or in cases of amenorrhea, amenorrhea cases, you can use Kanya Loha Devati, Raja Pravartini Vati, Arugya Vardini, uh, which Arugya Vardini has an effect on liver. So you can regularize the, all the pathology starts with the, uh, liver. So, to regularize the function of liver, you can use Arogya Vardini as an adjuvant therapy. It is not the main line of therapy. Then Lashanadivati, in case of Anarthava, again, Lashanadivati can be used. Then patients with the polycystic ovarian disease, often they have features of hypothyroidism. So, in such conditions, Shiva Gotika, one OD or two OD, that is fire, big tablets of one gram. Uh, that Sadhvaidya Shala, those tablets can be used very effectively to control the hypothyroidism as well. And Nastra Pushpantakarasa, Nityanandarasa, Granthi Chikitsa Adhyaya, Asi Sabasma, Artava Janaka, this can be used. In Google preparations, ovarian size reduction is best achieved with the Panchanarabakudu. Even it is the drug of choice in case of obesity also, in case of hypothyroidism also, in case of Granthi also. So, it's a drug of choice in case of polycystic ovarian disease. My study, which I carried out with the RGHS, I selected Rakta Kanchanara in place of Shweta Kanchanara. So, usually the Kanchanara Google, what is available in the market, is prepared with the Shweta Kanchanara. But the act action of Rakta Kanchanara and Shweta Kanchanara, if compared, Rakta Kanchanara is more Tikshna and Bhedana in nature. So, Rakta Kanchanara, by using Rakta Kanchanara, I found a very good result with infertility. Uh, the, my uh, 27 patients, infertility patients, out of 27 infertility patients, 18 patients conceived in my study. So, I attribute the success of uh, uh, conception to this Rakta Kanchanara particularly. But uh, if you ask me whether there were any incidences of excessive bleeding, no such observations are done. Uh, I think if Rakta Kanchanara can be prepared, used instead of Shweta Kanchanara in case of polycystic ovarian disease, that would penetrate very, because of its Tikshna Guna, it will penetrate very effectively, I believe. Then Medo Haragogulu, Navakagogulu in obese patients, it will be drug of choice, where Asravdara predominant presentation is there, uh, then Kaishara Gugulu is also a good choice. Of course, Chandraprabha anywhere, anytime, in all gynecological diseases, it can be used. And for Shodhana, particularly, we use these for Shodhana purpose only. Uh, Varanadigrata may be used. 
of course, Palagrata, even though not for Shodhana, after Shuddhi, some Shodhana, Palagrata can be given as a Shaman Aushadi also. Even Sukumaragata can also be given as a Shaman Aushadi after Shodhana. Then Sukumaragata is prescribed uh, in lean PCOD patients. Very effectively, it works in lean PCOD. Maybe it is having Aranda in it, though it is. Bratha, it is a Yamaka Sneha with the air and the So it's a very good drug of choice in case of Arthabadushti Adelib, particularly Pitta Kapha involvement wherever it is. But the Tridosha also you can use it. Right? So Kumara Bratha is a very good choice. And Kalyanaka Bratha, because of its Pum Savana uh, property, we use it in case of infertility. And Asraddara Samprati, wherever it is, Pitta Bratha may be used for Shodhananga Sneha Pana. Shodhana Sneha. Uh, Tikta Kavrata is in, used as a uh, Chodan Sneha. Even Google Tikta Kavrata can also be used there. In amenorrhea, sometimes we get patients with a three months amenorrhea, six months amenorrhea, uh, which is not responding to anything. In such patient, Aravana Lashuna Rasayana or Lashuna Kalpa, we advise. So Lashuna, every day, they have to increase Lashuna like Kalpa it is, Vardhamana Pipali like, Vardhamana Lashuna Rasayana this is, one day one Lashuna, second day two, third day three. So in this order, or two, four, six, in this order they have to increase what maximum they can consume that they have to consume. Then in the decreasing order, after reaching a maximum, uh, their maximum capacity, they can reduce Lashuna, one to 15 to 14, 13, 12 like this. Then Takra Bhaya Prayoga, that can also be with Takra Anapana, Abhaya Churna, that can be given. Tasha Mula Haritaki in patients where there is scanty bleeding, obesity, scanty bleeding, or uh, oligo, um, oligomenorrhea. In these patients, Tasha Mula Haritaki, or sometimes patients having continuous bleeding with the, uh, less uh, scanty bleeding for prolonged duration. In such patients, the Shumula Haritaki is a good choice. Uh, similarly, Erinda Barjita Haritaki, right? Gomutra Haritaki can also be given in these patients. Shilajita Payoga can also be considered. So these are some of my prescriptions. Uh, as I discussed, I have completed, uh, and of course, there were many theses, PG level theses, uh, almost in everything, Kanchanara Gugulu was a common drug. Salasara Rigana was associated with that in some studies. Asana Rigana Kwata was uh, another drug in some studies. Then Chatapushpa Churana was there in some studies. Then Nastapushpa Antakarasa was there in some studies. Falagrata or Falasarpi, Agu Falasarpi was there in some studies. So like this, there were several studies carried out on this polycystic ovarian disease. But in this uh, research project, wherein 105 patients were taken, 27 out of 18 conceived, I said. And again, in these 27, three patients, their husbands were not at their station. They were abroad. That is, That may be a, one reason why they have not, the. Uh, if they were in station, probably conception rate would have been more. 80% improvement was seen in menstrual irregularities. It was, uh, the drugs were Kanchanara Gukulu, with the Kanchanara, then Sala Saradi Gana, but predominantly the drugs in Sala Saradi were Asanadi Gana only, Asanadi Gana Kashaya. Then Shata Pushpa Churna. Shata Pushpa Churna was given uh, on empty stomach, 10 gram Shata Pushpa Churna on empty stomach. This was the combination given in this particular study. So 24 patients were presenting with scanty menstruation, 19 patients had normal flow, and nine patients were presenting with excessive and prolonged flow. And uh, out of this nine patients, eight got changed into normal amount. And in 80% altogether, the menstrual irregularity rates were corrected 80%, in 80% of the patients. Then, as I discussed earlier, S3 complaints such as hirsutism, acanthosis, acne, hair fall, skin tags, all reverted without giving any local therapy or particular treatment for these complaints. And to the extent when the study was completed, some patients who restarted their Nidana Sevana, again, these features reappeared in them. Right? So after Shodhana, six months, the treatment period was for six months. After six months, uh, when the patients went after some another six months or one year, when they came back with the same features, all these ac acanthosis, everything reoccurred. They were 
they were willing to continue the treatment even after six months because they could find good results in acne and acanthosis nigricans. But I could also find some pitta predominant patient, prakriti patients, after taking Kanchanara Guguru, they found increased incidences of acne. That is also there. They used to say that Ushna Jasti Aftabe, Ushna heat body, they used to say such patients. And uh, ultrasonographically, when we observed, 65 patients showed complete reversal of PCOS pattern of ovaries. In almost all the patients, the ovarian volume has been regressed significantly. Volume of the ovary was regressed in polycystic uh, in, and uh, uh, when we considered ultrasonological volume of the ovaries, in 12 patients, there were altered LH and FSH ratio. All the patients were not having altered LH-FSH ratio. There were minimal changes, but in 12 patients, there was classical more than 3 each to 1 ratio. It got reversed in all these 12 patients. Right? In two patients, there was increased prolactin level that was also reverted to normal in these patients. One more interesting observation was, though the obese patients has reduced weight, an average of 5 kg weight was reduced in all obese patients, none of the lean patients whose BMI was normal, we could not find any uh, decrease in the weight. They maintained their weight. There was no decrease in the weight in lean PCOD patients, whereas all obese patients, obese PCOD patients could register decrease in the weight and their BMI. So these were some of the observations which were made in this research project. I think now it is time to close the session.